guys in the fast lane here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to find out which B series transmission you have. All right, so I got two transmissions sitting here, and the shift forks look a little different. On this one right here, the shift forks are a lot thicker, and then on this one, the shift forks, they're a lot thinner. So I was thinking right off the bat, oh man, now I got I got a GSR or a ITR or a B16 transmission, which with my setup I don't want that. I have a GSR turbocharged, so I want I need a long fifth gear. And the LS comes with like about when you're doing about 80, 75, 80, you'll be at like 30, 34 to 3800 RPM, something like that. And with a GSR, you'll be at like 4,000 RPMs, and that's not good for highway miles and engine wear. So anyhow, if we want to calculate our gears, we got to first find out which gear we want to look at and find out which one uh, will tell us which transmission is. The first one is your fifth gear, which is right here. It's this fifth gear. The top gear is right here. You have your main and your uh, secondary. So pretty much your counter, this will be your counter right here. And this is your, actually I take it back, I believe this is the main, and this is your counter. So, pretty much, um, this one right here, this is the counter, and for a LS transmission, it's going to have 25 teeth. So you have to count the teeth on this gear right here. And then you have to count the teeth directly behind it, wherever this gear is touching, this is fifth gear, and you have to count those teeth. Now I got 35 teeth on this one. And I got 25 teeth on this one, which tells me it's an LS transmission. If it was a GSR or a SI Coupe or a B16, it would have 28 teeth here, and it would have uh, 32 teeth right here on the on the main. So that's great, and I'm really happy that I didn't get a ITR transmission. So um, if you want to calculate other ones, some people swap out the final drive with the LS and the rest is. So you're going to look at your uh, fourth gear, which is right underneath here. You got your fifth, and then we come down right down here, and we got fourth, and then we got third, and second, and then first. So here's your fifth gear right here. Then we got fourth, if you want to find out what fourth is, fourth gear um, for the final is going to be, let's see here, fourth is going to be 29 on the main and 30 on the second one for an LS and then for like a coupe, a 99, 2000, it's going to be uh, 28 and 31. So 28 and then 31, 28 on the main and 31 on the counter. So that's what we're looking at. So if you're, I'll put a, on my website, I'm going to put all the uh, gear ratios and everything. And uh, if you want to find out your gear ratio, a quick way to do it is you take the gear, you count the teeth. So say the teeth are 35 on our main and 25 on our counter. So what you're going to do is you take 35 divided by 25, and that's going to tell you that your gear ratio. Also, one more quick tip. Um, this is your reverse gear right here. All right. And when it's in neutral, it can't hit nothing, it's in neutral right now. But what I was having a problem with is, let me take it out. This is how the gear was sitting in my transmission. I don't know how, but it was. I can't really get it in there, but it was at the bottom. All right, let me see. Anyhow, it was underneath the fork, and it was going When I would hit the gas, it would go And then when I push the clutch in, it would stop. Because obviously it stopped spinning the transmission. But it wouldn't it would get stuck in second gear and it wouldn't come out then I would turn the flywheel or the uh, crank pulley a little bit and push on the gear and it would pop out of gear so if you guys are having that problem definitely this would be a good thing to check out um, but it can be something else too if it's stuck in gear the telltale would be if it's stuck in gear when the car's off you can't get it out, then that's not a pressure plate issue or anything like that. If it's stuck in gear when the vehicle's running, then and it won't come out until you turn the vehicle off, then it's definitely more than likely a pressure plate problem. You have to pull the transmission and 
swap the clutch out or the pressure plate. So usually the springs go and that's what causes that. But as for this, it was getting stuck in second and it was whining really bad. And uh, I would put it in first and go to ease out in the clutch and the engine would, would conk out. Because it was, it was pretty much locking up the main and, uh, the main and uh, carrier drive. Throw one more thing in here. Um, I had a person ask me about a whining noise and had commented on another video where they replaced the clutch release bearing or the throwout bearing and it didn't fix the whining problem and the reason why was more than likely it was the input shaft bearing now on the Honda transmissions they're all in the same location pretty much as far as D and B series that I've taken apart pretty much the easiest way to know which bearing is the input shaft bearing is it's going to be directly underneath the shaft that the clutch release bearing is on so if we flip this over see if I can't hold it up and we get a quick look right here is the clutch release bearing so wherever that's under that's your input shaft bearing and that right there that's the main shaft so we get the main and then we got the counter so right here is where it's at now you can check your ball bearings in there and I'll give you a quick shot so you can see how to identify a bad one you'll be missing ball bearings or it'll be shaved down or it'll just be really rough sounding so let me show you that so here's the bearing as you can see the main shaft you go down and if you look in there sorry about the lighting it's not the greatest but you can see all my bearings are intact there's a space between them which is completely normal so let me see there we go so you can see down in there and also just kind of move it around look at the other side come around and look and see if they're all good in there if they are then you're pretty much okay okay just a quick breakdown of the transmission you got your uh, reverse idler right here you also have your reverse change holder which is this thing right here also we got uh, our shift change assembly which is in the back but on this transmission they're both the same this is the assembly this is your fork for uh, fifth gear this is your third and fourth fork and your I believe it's the uh, second gear fork yep. right here you have your third and fourth sleeve and you have your fifth sleeve also you have your second gear sleeve right here and then for the breakdown of the uh, gears you have your fifth fourth third second and let me start over here so we have fifth fourth third second and first gear down here at the very bottom this is your reverse this one right here this is reverse they usually get a little bit chewed up on the top it's common and your input shaft bearing obviously is right here right under the main shaft so you got your main and your counter shaft so that's just a quick brief uh, description of what's inside the transmission if you need a parts description that's right there also this is your um, you got your input and then you got your counter shaft bearing which is down at the bottom there so counter shaft bearings can go too but normally if you're hearing a whine and you replaced your uh, clutch release bearing or your throw out bearing it's the input shaft bearing for sure while I'm in here I might as well make a quick note of where the synchros are they're these gold things these are your synchros actually I probably could pull one out for you fifth gear this is your fifth gear synchro so let's go ahead and take off one of the bearings. Well, you don't want to drop it like that, but there it goes. And we got right here another bearing. And this is a hub. And a lot of times you want to check them for spotting. Make sure they're not all burned out. So that's the hub. And then right here we got another one. But here's what a synchro looks like. All right, and these are the rings, and usually the rings are like your stoppers, and the rings cause it to stop before when you push the clutch and you go to shift, it'll stop the synchro so it can line up, and if they get wore real bad, then you're going to need a new ring. 
Also, one of the main things you want to look for, if I can get this focused real nice, is you want a nice point right there on the sink rope. This is what slides in. So if and sticking over here, like starting to bust out the side, like get fatter, then it's going to have a hard time going in. It's going to get locked up and start grinding. Also in here, you want to check and look inside here and make sure these are real smooth right here in the channels, those lines. You don't want those getting fatter and then they'll get loose and you get play. So that's pretty much it. And when you're putting them back in, it's really simple. You got... There's no way for them to go in wrong. They got little squares right here on either side. Right there and right there. Three of them. And you got squares right here. So one here, one here, and here. So we're just going to set these back in there. Same way we got them. Just like that. You can't go wrong. If you go this way, there's pretty much only one way you can go in. So you don't have to worry about that. For bearings, I'm just going to show you what a good bearing versus a bad bearing kind of sounds like. On the differential right here, we have two of them. And if you can hear this one, that's uh, pretty loud. Then you hear this one, it's not as loud. So this one's, this one's getting ready to go. Also, on the, the differential right here, look at the play on this one. See all that play? And just very little bit of play right there. So you know the bearing on the bottom is just as bad as the one on top. Now this... Nice and quiet. So that's what you want to hear. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Go ahead, comment, like, and subscribe. Also, don't forget to check out my Facebook page, website, and Android app. All that can be found on my YouTube channel in the About Me section. I'm in the fast lane, and I'll see you guys next time.